Welcome back to Hashtag Fish. So it's been a while. I've been doing a lot of uh, research-based work here where I've uh, been working for the last six years at James Cook University in Singapore, where we run an aquaculture program for bachelors in science with major in aquaculture. We also have postgraduate programs and we run a lot of R&D related projects. So I thought of sharing here a new system which is uh, still a bit temporary to run some trials and I thought that some of you may have interest in learning about recirculation aquaculture systems where we don't need to uh, waste so much water but yeah it takes quite a large number of uh, equipments to do the filtration so the water comes back as clean as possible so I'll share here two of these new systems that we will be testing uh, soon and everything is to attend these two tanks they are polypropylene I'll show you how they were uh, built so here is how the tank walls come all rolled up and nice into the container this was made to order according to what we wanted in terms of design of tank bottom and here is how the different plastic sheets are welded together with the same material which is the PP through this welding hot air gun and here I've got someone who has some knowledge on how to PP a weld Uh, I really like plastic tanks instead of fiber for many reasons, which I can cover later. Plastic, unlike fiberglass, it doesn't peel. You don't need to do paint it from now and again. You don't get osmosis and, and anything like that. So we've got here probably about one meter of water column and three and a half meters of uh, diameter. Our aeration system uh, runs out of this uh, central pipe with uh, just uh, regular like aquarium based air stones and we are running uh, for each of these tanks two small uh, blowers and share more more details uh, these little guys are quite efficient and much less noisy than a ring blower which uh, for bigger systems is better but for smaller systems is a cheaper easy to run and plug and play so what do we have here? Maybe I'll show the, the water dynamics. So the water will be supplied by this pipe here. We put a manifold to come. And here we have some, uh, this will be a biofilter. So there'll be uh, like a fluidized uh, biomedia, which are those plastic chips, which is also called M MBBR, uh, moving bed uh, biofilter. And uh, this holds will provide the water for that. So the tanks will drain through the center. We've got the internal uh, stand pipe. We will see, maybe those holes there are too uh, little, but we can always increase it uh, later. And it will also flow through the top because at the surface, there's a lot of uh, oils and foam. So that will, will come out. So this is not uh, for shrimp, this will be for, for fish and I want to run, this is a clear grass system. So it will drain through here. This is uh, what we call like a, a, a hedge uh, system. When it is fully open, it will drain the whole tank. So this will be run, uh, in operation will run close. This also will run close. So you see like there's three uh, horizontal ways for the water to go through bottom one is to run fully run fully empty this is this one here if I have that closed and this open the water will come out of the tank you know by differential pressure it will flow it through here and when I want the tank full both of these will be closed and the water will run from the bottom from the bottom of the tank bottom of the tank water will come through here and this will control the height of the tank so this is why we have two in uh, two so we have access to the valves and temporarily it will be into this uh, small sump from this sump uh, we've got this 
pump that will push water through the different filter elements. One of the primary ones is this uh, a sand filter where we have some glass uh, chips on the inside. And then from here, from this, because we do want clear water rust, this is for an experimental trial. For, for research, it will run through uh, those uh, cartridges that will hold a bag filter, probably 100 microns. Over here, we have two uh, protein skimmers. We can talk about protein skimmers in more in more detail about the functions and uh, what is the basic design for a protein skimmer, what it does and how it does it, and also how you can uh, maybe DYI one uh, skimmer. So to keep bacteria levels low in this system, we put two UV power sources here. So there are UV light bulbs so in each of these uh, in each of these uh, cylinders there are uh, four light bulbs you know that can be replaced let's look from the other side yeah so here here's where the light goes and uh, we have uh, one one that goes into a room on the inside a small room I have another that will run from here the UV is the last uh, resource that will go through the tank. Also, to have more buffer capacity, we are going to use this, uh, I think it's about 10,000 liter tanks as storage, you know, just to keep alkalinity levels uh, higher and everything, the, all the whole system buffered. So I do have an additional uh, moving bed biofilter where the media has already been conditioned. Uh, I'll, see uh, this is what I'm talking about so if you guys want me to share more about the individual components of the RAS you can do perhaps separate videos about it and uh, here is already in, in seawater and this does take about one month at least you know with dosing with ammonium chloride to get the bacteria going. So when we put the fish in the system, the bacteria there will deal with ammonia uh, straight away and we won't have any ammonia or nitrite spikes. Yeah. So this is a basic uh, a system. This is for, for R&D, uh, but there are many concepts maybe of interest for some of you that uh, want to learn more you know, about water quality. And there's one last, one last thing about the system that I will share. Let me swap the camera. So uh, we installed a pump just for backwashing our uh, big sand filter because we will run in a marine-based system and we don't want to lose uh, the problem, uh, not, not a problem of sand filters, but it is that it uh, traps the dirt inside and then we need to uh, swivel these uh, valves, you know, like to do backwashes. So in order, in order to, to do that, whenever you're backwashing, you will, you will lose water. And see, we are not close to the sea, so I need to truck in my seawater or make artificial seawater. So in order to avoid losing seawater, we are backwashing the filter with dechlorinated fresh water. It just means that I have to do a bypass when I'm doing the back flush and turn on that pump to, to back flush the water. And actually, we back flush into this tank so we can see what's coming out, how much dirt is uh, coming out. And later, if I want to back flush it with seawater, I can let the things, the dirt water to settle here and flush the solids from the bottom and reuse part of the, what is like the sand filter uh, discharge. Let me know if you find uh, contents like this of interest to you and I, I can uh, come back, you know, and keep making videos. Thanks, uh, give it a like and subscribe it if you haven't yet and check our uh, playlist for shrimp farming. There's almost about 30 videos in there where we dealt with shrimp farming.
And now let's uh, switch gears a bit and I'll talk a bit more about recirculation systems if there's enough interest. Okay, thank you and have a good day.